outer orange. It's that time again! It is time to talk about some of the decks that I'll be building for this upcoming set, which is Lyrical Set for Trick or Treat. And previous year, I want to discuss some awesome decks, things I'm going to be playing, things that you could try out, and you're going to have deck locks, so it's kind of like a win-win situation. I get to talk about cool cards, and you get to look at cool cards. So these are all going to be 50-card decks. They were going to be, these are basically decks that I'll be playing, building, etc. Basically decks that I've been messing around with and I want to share with you. I tried to keep the decks to decks that are a little bit more unknown or decks that people aren't playing as much. I did mention some of this in the what to buy, but actually I changed some of the decks a little bit. The logs are a little bit different. Keep in mind the deck log is right here. So if you want to look at it yourself, it's right there. Just, you know, you just look at it and you could just basically watch this video by just grabbing the logs and just ignoring my voice. Or you can listen to me and just actually enjoy my, my voice if you want to do that. Whatever works for you, whatever you're comfortable with. The point of these videos is to basically have the best of both worlds where I give you some lists, but you can also listen to me analyze it or you can just do your own thing with it. So let's get started. I'm going to start with Pacifica. This is the normal Pacifica deck. I changed that a little bit for my what to buy, but basically this is Pacifica with all the Pacifica support. And I think that the deck plays really well, actually. And I'm not entirely sure if this is what I want to stick to, like in terms of build structure. If what's here already already works pretty well, it's pretty cheap, actually. Or it should be pretty cheap. I don't know how expensive Pacifica is going to get, but if she's not going to be that expensive, this whole deck becomes really cheap outside from the mouse and the maybe Yuika. But you don't really need Yuika. She's just really useful. So anyway, let's talk about Pacifica real quick. So Pacifica basically is like a generic type of build. The only thing is like you have to run the Pacificas to kind of keep the engine going. She has one effect where you can counterblast, put a card from hand to the bottom of your deck and draw two cards. It's really nuts. You can bottom deck anything and you will be shuffling. So it's kind of like a, an Ange play type of play where you're basically setting up your deck, but you're also drawing into cards. And then her ability, again, also very kind of Ange-esque, but it says when this unit attacks a Vanguard, you can counterblast, still blast a card Pacifica's card name. And then you search your deck to one normal unit and call it to open rear guard circle. Very simple. It is restricted to specifically normal units. It has to be an open rear guard circle, but there's a lot of ways to empty out your board, so it doesn't actually matter. And yeah, you just call whatever you want from deck, which is a toolbox mechanic. I think this is one of those decks where the more cards we get, the stronger this gets. Kind of similar to how Petrolka has a lot of chances of being a very strong deck. Once we have a bigger card pool to work with, that's more generic. I think Pacifica enters that realm too. I think right now she's just okay. The ride line here is basically just Pacifica searchers. I'm not the biggest fan of the generic ride line i actually prefer other ones you can run the kaya ride line you can run the ballista ride line heck you can run the siana ride line there's a there's a lot of different ride lines you could try out i think they're honestly slightly better this kind of helps with the consistency of fighting pacificas but you're basically top sevening for two cards and you only and you're only really looking for seven cards total and i think right now especially with there only being two pacificas i don't know if this ride line's worth it but you can experiment and do your thing i will say the second effect this one in particular the fact that you get to lose a counter blast so that you don't have to use is really nice like having to not worry about one cb is, is pretty good i i think i i honestly think that that's pretty good basically you get to just draw two cards for free which is really nice and you get to bond deck something you can bond deck the over triggering bond deck cards you want to see in, in through through her attack like whatever you want to do very useful and your opponent doesn't know about it which i think is really cracked i think it's a very awesome way to bond deck stuff with and and re refilter your hand it kind of makes us say your opponent never really truly knows what's in your hand like they might know some of it but they won't know all of it like i said it's mainly just this card i think you can easily like run something else in this slot and like make maybe keep this one because i do think this is like where the weakness the weak, weakest part of the card is because this one says this one wrote upon by anything you can do the pacific effect but i do think this one can easily be like teched out or something else just personal opinion but i'm keeping it simple for that way so people can start simple and then they can start experimenting because this is a toolbox deck and because it's a toolbox deck there's a lot of different ways you can build it after that we just have the regular pacifica pacifica persona you just need persona because persona is very strong then we have the second pacifica in the back row center circle you can attack with her as long as you have a Pacifica Vanguard and she can attack in the back row. And if your opponent's great, they're great, she gets 10k. And then at the end of the she attacked, if you have a Pacifica Vanguard, you can put her into soul. So when you just get 5k until end of turn. And if you put a card, um, and if you put a card from deck, uh, from the back row center column into soul, you draw a card. So basically, if she attacks in the back row center, you get all the effects. You get the draw cards, you get power, and then you also get something else power. And then also she puts herself into soul, which also activates Pacifica's ability, because then you can soul boss the same Pacifica out. And, and she then she can recycle herself because you can bomb deck her again with like other cards. You can set her back essentially. So basically she just keeps replenishing herself. By the way, if you're really big into premium, this card is actually insane. It's a very, very good card to throw in premium. It's an extra attack. Um, and it's a Pacifica name and Pacifica doesn't care about the name. The Pacifica only cares about the Pacifica part, doesn't care which Pacifica it is. So you can easily play this with the guard restrict and have the extra attack. So just something to keep in mind for premium players, really nuts stuff. This card basically says you can put a card from hand to soul, look at top two, choose one card. Uh, add to hand put the rest at the bottom so again you can keep kind of cycling with that weird bottom decking and then shuffling it type of thing i think it's a really cool effect so i actually threw her in because i actually think she's useful this deck so blasts a lot 
So having access to this is actually really helpful for the soul. The only downside is you have to, you know, put cards from hand to soul. You get a card back, but you just don't know. You don't know what card's going to be. So it's kind of up to you how you want to play that out. But I think it's really cool. We have the guard restrict here. This just kind of helps with guard restricting. Basically, you can call this from deck off of Pacificus effect and tell your opponent, hey, you have to guard with two. So I think that's just also just a really interesting card. Got some more Pacificus support. Basically, basically you can counter blast like a Pacific effect. If you look at top seven Pacificus, if you if you counter charge, kind of okay effect. Second effect is okay too. It says when your other unit from the back row center column, and when your other back row unit attacks, she gets 5k. It's okay. It's 25 in a persona. Eh, it's all right. Then we have the, you know, the ride deck fixer. This is pretty nuts. Uh, the counter boss is actually really good if you want to get the initial 5k to the front row on persona turns. It just makes all the numbers really, really strong, makes them all magic numbers. And then what the card you call out is going to be extra beefy. So you can call this out and it'll be a 28k. If it triggers, you can make it go higher. So overall, just like that, that really helps. We have the Yuka as well to keep those uh, front row circles empty. So that way, when you when we use Pacifica's effect, you won't whiff it. So Yuka is pretty important in the stack. If you have other ways to bomb deck like Ingrid, that works too. But basically, you need bomb deckers or you need a way to remove that front row. This is one of the ways to do it. It makes it a lot easier because you could boost, uh, you know, get rid of the card and then call like Ingrid or call whatever you want and you're fine. But yeah, just just you really kind of need. I feel like you need Yuka just to keep the as long as you have a way to empty your circles, you're fine. You can also just call her out and put her in the back row and do it that way because she disappears herself. So you always have something. But I like the front row rigors also being empty, just even just to have more cards in hand. And this deck draws a lot and just having extra cards in hand, I don't think is a bad thing. Next, we have the mouse. This could be whatever you want it to be. You can also just keep it as this. The mouse just really helps for getting personas back to hand. Also in this deck, because it wants Pacificas, well, then you kind of want to see Pacificas. And because of that, this lets you bring back Pacificas. So it's like kind of why wouldn't you want this card in your deck type of thing? Also, you know, the shield is really nice. We have this card. This is the one that recycles the Pacificas back to deck. And you can also counter charge, which is also pretty useful. She does self-retire, which also isn't terrible since it opens up that circle if you needed to. PGs, uh, crits, fronts. Uh, if you can go front or draw, this deck, I think, draws a lot to where you can go get away with the fronts more. I'm running this just as an extra, like, just more shield. You don't need this card. This could be something else if you want it to be. Uh, you can up on these. Maybe there's another tech you want to throw in. You maybe want to get rid of this and maybe run three or something else. That's fine. Next, I have the second Pacifica deck. This is the weird one that I've mentioned also in my video. This is the one that extends attacks off of uh, very weird conditions. This is way more bricky, but it's way more. Like the ceiling's a little bit higher. Basically, in this version, similar to the other version, but it doesn't run the searchers. So because I'm not a big fan of searchers, I think they're kind of OK. You'll notice I'm running the Velista engine just for extra soul. But in this version, basically the difference is we are trying to extend attacks. So when we swing with Pacifica, we actually want to call out the Kathleen and use her ability to discard cards. We want to discard Justine and then call out Justine. So basically you want to have the two front rows empty or back row, you know, Justine can go anywhere. Um, and then you want to basically call her and then use her effect to call her. And that way you have extra attacks. The only downside is the numbers aren't too great. But the upside is it's just kind of cool. So this is just another variation. And yeah, it's just a really funny deck. It's really cool. Very soul heavy. So very cautious with how you use your soul. Um, and you can change this out to be something else. That grade three in this deck also really works with this deck as well. So that might be something I've considered. Ingrid helps you counter charge and also bottom deck. So that way you keep those both circles empty. And then we also have a way to cycle back to Pacifica's with her. So just, just a different version of, the, of Pacifica. Next we have Medell. I talked about Medell quite a bit in my last video. I'm going to talk about it again here. Uh, I think Medell is a really underrated deck, like insanely underrated. This It was already underrated when it came out in set three. And I feel like it got, it's still underrated. Like there's like, I think I, think I know two people. I play this deck and that that's about it. This deck's weird, but in a good way. I think this deck's pretty cool. It's very open to a bunch of different ways you can build it. Just to go this route, you can kind of choose whichever route you want to go. You can play the normal Medell ride line, which is the one that lets you basically just uh, revive cards and then also look at top three. This version I like more because this deck is very soul heavy. You'd be surprised how fast you run out of soul no matter what you're doing. You just eat soul like crazy. And I think the Ballista engine really helps. When I was playing the normal package, I noticed my soul was like constantly empty. With this package, I can I noticed that my soul is empty, but I have more soul to work with, so it's easier. Basically, Medell lets you uh, Catablast 2 to reveal the top card. And depending on what it is, you get a fit abilities. So if it's a normal unit, you can uh, put the reveal card to your hand and then choose a card from drop and call it to, to the regular circle. And that unit gets a crit. And then the other effect, if it's a trigger, you just counter charge and call a card from drop. You don't get the crit though. Uh, weirdly enough, you actually want to hit the normal units more than you want to hit the trigger units, but the trigger units aren't terrible because you get the counter charge. So it's kind of up to you, sort of what you're setting up for. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this deck now more so than I was before is because we got a new card. So we were just talking about how Medell basically lets you call a card from drop and gets a crit. Well, guess what? Now you can call two cards from drop. 
This one says if you have a Vanguard of Medellin's card, you can put this into Soldiers and Vanguards until the end of the turn when a card from drop would be chosen by a unit's original ability, you can choose two cards instead of one. So basically, you can revive two cards now. Now, why does that matter? Well, it matters because of this card right here. This card says when it's revived from the drop zone ability of your Medell, you can give it the red text that at the end of the battle that this attack to Vanguard, you can still buy some restand. So basically, this gets 5k and so sets 15. Then you get the crit on it. And then if you're on Persona, now you have now it's a 25k. And then if you have boosters, it can be even higher, it can go to 38 and so on and so forth. And they have crits on them. So basically, you call two of these out, you restand both of them, they have crits, and they're big numbers. So you can go for a five attack play. Now keep in mind, it's a lot of soul, it's a lot of counterblast. This sees it's soul, this sees counterblast. Uh, some other stuff that you have to, you know, prepare set up with will eat some soul and counterblast. So pretty heavy, but it gets the job done. Um, after that, it's just everything after these three cards is basically the engine to keep these three cards going, or keep mainly these two cards, because your focus is always to revive this and keep this live. Basically, you want to keep using this ability as much as possible, and you want to keep restanding these as much as possible. So we have a girl here to kind of help with soul. She lets you look at top two. Basically, the first one, you can look at top, put into soul, or weave it on top. If you put it into soul, you can look at top card again, so you know what your next top card is. And then she so she gives you soul, and then she also lets you know what's on top. So you can play her first, and then go into Medell, or you can play Medell, and maybe your top card's crappy or something, and you can play this to kind of help with that. Also, again, the soul's a big thing. If you really need the extra soul, it really helps to get these going. So very good stuff. We won the mass. Just just it's just an extra filter card. Um, orders don't really count for this deck. I do run the Chalice because this deck really needs Persona. But it's really scary if you if this is your top card because nothing happens. So just something to kind of keep cautious of. Be very careful. This card, the it's not it's not a normal unit, nor is it a trigger unit. So that you know running running orders is really risky in this deck. So just keep in mind if you draw into it, good. If you don't draw into it, be scared. But luckily enough, it's a one of. It's kind of similar to the whole blaster brain wide up uh, ride line. You know, you can, if you like if you open up the sanctitude, uh oh. You know, I'm not running Sanctuary for that very reason. This deck can't really afford to, but also you want to see normal units and trigger units way more than anything else. So the Sanctuary kind of ruins that process. You can still run it, of course, because it's a very useful card. Obviously, it does a lot of good stuff. But if you're if you want to like keep the engine more consistent, you usually don't want to be running orders. So there's that uh, we have PGs, and then there is this card. I think this card's okay. Uh, I've been experimenting with more, and I'm still kind of like on a, on. A, I think this card's okay type of thing. If you place it. Um, all your trigger units on rear guard circle and in your deck are considered normal units. So if you really want to play for the normal unit ability, this is what this does. It's also an 11k beater. I personally like it more for the 11k beater. Keep in mind, it's only for the turn's place. So, you know, once it loses that fact, you can kind of do something else. I'm not the craziest fan of this card, but it's, it's not bad. It's not bad. It also works with the bunny girl, but it is, it's okay. It's okay. It does this thing. Next, we have this girl. This card's really good. This is where the soul gets a little bit eaten, but basically you can still blast two. And minus your counter blast effect by one for the Medellin's ability. So Medellin's ability costs two counter blasts. This makes it cost one. She also gives 5k. And then um, she also gets another 5k when another unit is placed from drop. So basically she's a 30k beater behind, you know, the uh, the Elises. She gets really strong. So really good stuff. We want reseason here just for the extra beef. The 10k power ups really help, especially early on. You can rush down your opponent. I do some crazy stuff. Pretty awesome. And then after that, it just triggers the Chalice. But I guess that Persona's important. And then the Ballista card for just the, the ride line for the soul. So that's basically the deck. Uh, again, your focus is just get these out as much as possible, see them as much as possible, and just kind of go crazy. It's really fun, very good deck. I recommend it. That's Medell. Next, we have Sienna. I did put Sienna on here. I know Sienna is kind of popular, but I actually want to build this deck. I originally wasn't going to, and then I was like, you know what? I really want to build it for two reasons. One, it's really pretty. This deck is really pretty to look at because it's got all the Halloween cards. You'll notice the couple decks I've been showing so far are running some of the old cards, like as well. They're running old cards, and Pacifica doesn't have the Halloween look to her, but this one actually looks like a Halloween deck, and I am all here for it. I've been tempted to take up triggers and change them up just like I like the full Halloween experience with this girl and everything. Um, so this is a variation I'm currently testing. I'm not 100% sure on this yet. I'm not set in stone. I don't know what the most optimal build of this deck is yet, but this is just my version. So basically, Sienna, she uh, works with this weird front row guard circle situation going. It says if your opponent's guard circle and front row has a total of two or less units, this gets a crit and a drive. So basically she gets three. So if you guard it, uh, you kind of can go around it. It's a little weird, but basically you have to crit and the drive. And then you can put a trigger into soul with, from hands to soul when she attacks to get 50k power. So she's a 28k or 38k and with the triple drive. And then also at the end of the battle, this unit was attacked by a rear guard. If no cards were put into the guard circle of this battle, your opponent chooses a card from their hand and they may discard it. If they don't discard it, bind the rear guard that attacked. So this effect is really cool and her whole ride line relies on this. And it's just a really cool ability because it's like a defensive offensive type of funky wonky, uh, like, like, control type of aspect it's really cool she has uh the grade two that also does something similar and then she also has the rotopon skill where you can choose a trigger you know or a blitz order from your drop and put it to hand so you can get access to blitzes 
Um, and then also she has another one, same thing with the first ability, but second ability says when it's upon, you can still boss draw a card, return all of your points from rear guards to hand. Again, if they're attacking with, them, with, with rear guards, you can bounce them back. It's really weird, but it's just part of the deck. And then we have the support around it, basically. So this one says you can return all of your points from rear guards to hand, and then this one gets plus 5k. And then we have this, uh, the other one, which this one says once placed, you, your opponent uses one of their front rear guards and returns it to hand. And then when she attacks a Vanguard, if you have a Vanguard or card, you can Cabot to give this unit 5k. And then for every open Vanguard circle, she gets 10k or greater you draw. So basically, this is just a very, very, very beefy card, and you get to draw on top of that. Really good stuff. And we have the other card that also works with Siami. You can still watch this when opponents front rear guards. You return it. If, if you if you still watch the trigger for this, and you can choose my Vanguard to give a 10k, so you can make your Vanguard even bigger with the triple drive. That's really nuts. I run Yuka in here because I don't know. Yuka, I think Yuka is a good card. I think reusing abilities is really good. And a lot of these abilities, like the first, some of the first abilities, like some of these abilities are free. Like this one, one place on rear is completely free. When attacks is different, but the first ability is free. So, you reuse effects. Like, why not? And also, like, you can, this deck doesn't really counterblast that much, which is also really nice, but I just think that, I just think Yuka is really good. Sometimes your hand's kind of crappy, you have to call the Persona. That's why you can bounce the Persona back to hand. Also, this one, very similar thing. Uh, also, this one says you can put this unit to so choose one of your vanguards to give it 10k, again, making your vanguard super beefy and makes it really, really hard to block and it's just really weird concept. I also run this. I think this card's kind of funny in here, so I've run it, but you can basically counter blast and give your rear guards all 5k. I just think that's hilarious. Like your numbers are already big. You can make them even bigger. And then, um, like I said, this deck doesn't really counter blast. I put in, I forcefully put some counter blast in like this card. Um, I basically forced the counter blast with this card because the vanguard has literally no, like no actual cost on them. Uh, a lot of these cards are like soul blast mainly like this one has a counter blast on it and the rest are soul blast cards so i was like you know what why not so i threw her in her about other stuff if you want and then yeah i'm not too sure of the triggers i just kind of went the i've been going like the crit front route because a lot of bermuda's cards that have been recently revealed are all very draw heavy like like this draws cards a couple other cards draw so i've kind of been like well do i need the draw i don't know but with, especially with energy blast in mind i probably don't need the draw so that's why i've been going first but yeah, so that's the Siana build. Um, I'm just kind of experimenting with it, kind of just gonna mess around, see how where it takes me. Next, we have the Fertia build. Basically, this is the regular Fertia build where I'm running the regular Fertia on the ride line and I'm running the extra copy of the new girl in the deck. You can kind of go either way. Up to you if you want to make this as, as your ride deck or not. I think the deck plays extremely similar no matter which route you go. I think this one's a little bit more hyrule because you want to, the, the effect of this is a little bit weirder, but you get the triple drive and yeah, you can just kind of go far. So basically you get four drives versus three. I personally like setting up first and then going into something like this. And I just think the original effect of this card is really good. So that's just how I feel. It's just Overlord and there's nothing wrong with Overlord, right? But basically the ride line lets you uh, bring back friends cards. And then you can also make the ability of your Fertia be but basically when you discard, you discard for free. You don't have to discard. So that's really nice. So when you ride up, you don't have to discard. But you will discard on attack so it doesn't you know it just balances itself back out after that we have a bunch of friends cards the biggest highlight in this deck is this card now this card's pretty good it, there was already a card like this and this one just basically got better this one gives 10k to itself if your points are greater and you have friends on the board and then also she gives 5k to fortia which is another reason why i like the regular one in the deck more because the regular one also gets 5k and then she gives another 5k whereas this one does not have the 5k so when it restands, it only restands with 23. So you have to rely on having this card on the board to keep the 5k. Whereas this one, she has her own 5k. So she, when she restands, she'll restand for bigger, basically. Or she should be restanding for bigger unless you boost. But you have the option to choose when you boost. Whereas with this one, you kind of want to start vanilla and then you want to boost. It's a little weird. So that's actually another reason why I prefer the, the regular one in the main deck and having this one as an extra persona ride. And the extra persona rides are big because Fertia loves persona riding. So there's that. After that, we got our Excel. Our Excel is insane. Once you bounce your board with Yuika, you can bounce your front row every single turn. Very nuts. I've talked about this combo a lot. Maybe I should make a video on it because I've definitely talked about, or like a short, I've talked about this combo a lot where I feel like I should just make a short explaining that you can bounce back your front row every single turn because a lot of people get really scared about Fortia. They're like, oh, I always have to have a full board. Well, not necessarily. This card bounces with absolutely no cost on it. Uh, as long as you have a board, you bounce. And then this card will bounce the other thing that this card will bounce the Roxelia and Roxelia will bounce the thing on the other spirit guard circle that that's on the on, in the front row on the other side, which is really nuts, by the way. And she also bounces anything. It doesn't have to be specific to the front row part. Usually you want to do the front row so that way your opponent can't target them or they can't swing into them. It gives them, it forces them to have to swing a van, which by the way, this deck likes having counter blast. So your opponent swinging a Vanguard is not a bad thing. So long story short, the Roxella Yulika combo is like insane in here. Next, we have the Melty just to draw extra cards. You don't have to run Melty. You can run a different Friends card. There's another Friends card. It's an AK that's a, that becomes a 13K on your turn. 
um and she's also really good so you can kind of experiment with that or you can run the other the other version of this card the, the worser version now if you really want to go down that route if you just don't want to spend money and you also don't want to worry about the the counter blast if you want to avoid counter blast the weirdly enough melty's counter blast is actually pretty heavy but the draw is really nice so up to you how you want to do it i run the mouse just for extra extra numbers if you feel uncomfortable with the friends cards you can bump this down put it to zero i will say this card lets you grab personas and also fortia is a friends card on both fortias it says vanguard rearguard circle she becomes friends so that is very important as sometimes you need friends cards it does happen and sometimes you have to make a decision between some persona writing or not uh just to have a, that full board condition it happens pretty rarely but if you're dealing with very very control-esque decks every single friends card matters and because of that, I like to get the be able to get these back. And my mouse lets the mouse is basically a friends card because it's not a friends card itself, but it gets you back friends cards, which I think is very important. Um, there is the promo that people run. Promo that goes with this deck is also pretty good. I'm not a fan of it because it requires soul. This deck eats soul like crazy. Um, and if you don't have soul, it just doesn't, it's weird. I don't know. I'm not a fan. It also isn't a friends card, and it's just a little weird, but it helps you revive and she does make numbers, so it's okay. I do run this in here for now. I might change this out. This is another friend's card. Basically, it just, it's just a 13k beater. I really value the 5k because you can put the 5k on for TM. You can put it on other unit. You can put it on anything you want. And I think that 5k is pretty important. You can have like a beat stick, like where it's like a 13k, but I think this is cooler. I think this deck got a, a number upgrade, which is a pretty good. Next, we have another card. This is just a 10k booster all the time. And she's actually a 10k at all times, not just, you know, as a back row. If she's in the front row, she is also still a 10k. So if your opponent has to swing into it, it's a 10k. It's not an 8k. So it's just a little fun fact of that. After that, we just have triggers. You can go draws or fronts. I think draws might be better in this deck than fronts, to be honest with you, but the fronts make the numbers just more annoying. Makes it harder to two to pass for your opponent. So the fronts are not bad, but it's it's really hard personally for me to decide which one's better. I think they both have weaknesses and strengths behind them. So that's it for Tia. I'm done for Tia. Very, very fun deck. If you want like a simple deck that's not super complicated, this deck is like perfect. Your decisions matter and what you do matters. It's just this deck's a little easier to play versus other decks especially in overdress i feel like overdress has a lot of way of complicated effects this one's very simple call a board do stuff as long as you are doing your effects you're fine so a little bit easier to play but I, sometimes the simplicity is nice. sometimes it's nice to play a simple deck and not like burn out your brain with decks like zorga which i do play a lot of zorga sometimes i get tired from playing zorga because it's a very aggressive deck on the on the mind you have to you have to really play out your plays carefully and going from that deck to something for tia is a really nice change of pace i did put a prism deck in here because i'm thinking about building it i'm not 100 set if i'm gonna build it yet but i am thinking about it i do have the cards to build this deck i already own these because of ballista and these cards weren't as expensive as they are now so i'm able to basically play prism without having to drop a lot of money if you can't drop the money just you know probably just don't play the deck to be honest because i think i think this card in here is very important uh, maybe not as important as Ballista, but it's pretty important to play the card. Um, basically, this is the the how other this is the topping list, but with a 50 card variant. Basically, in the in the past, this was at two, and this was at two, and we basically just bumped that up to four just to keep the consistency going. The mouse stays at two because you only have so many ride deck cards. And then people change this for the new Regulus piece when it comes out. We don't have it yet, so instead of that, people play this. And that's basically it. This deck is pretty cookie cutter in a sense, because most of the lists I've seen are basically about the same. The only difference I've seen is the Reese's being played. The Reese's is like a hit or miss for some, I guess. I don't know. But more, more recent ones I've seen do not have the Reese's and they just play something like this. So I want to try this out. This is kind of more for myself than it is for anyone else. I just want to try it. And it is a meta deck. So I'm just curious. I always get curious about meta decks. I just want to see what they're doing. So this is a deck that I want to build, probably mainly just even to know how to beat it. So that's why I built it. And also, I like Prisms. I played Prisms in Zero. I thought they were really fun. Uh, I can't wait for more Prism cards to come out. That's kind of where my excitement is going to be. Right now, there's only three Prisms. And because there's only three, I can't really do as much. Prisms like really accelerates when they have more Prism cards. Prism, I don't really have much else. Like I said, I haven't spent as much time on this as I spend the other decks I've mentioned. So I kind of putting in this lot. Last but not least, we have Kyrie. Uh, I, Kyrie is one of my favorite decks to play, and it just keeps getting cooler and cooler with the new cards that they keep getting. Uh, this card, this deck keeps getting, so I'm really excited about this. Kyrie basically is a bouncing deck as well, because when she attacks, you can still blast and bounce two cards to hand. And then if you Persona Road, you can also choose two cards from hand and call them to different rows. So basically, you can call like this, um, and call and call type of thing, or call and call. You just can't go call and call. I can't call it the front row. You gotta kind of have to call it all. But this is the grade four variant. It's focused more on the grade four, but I do run Persona because of the new grade two we got. 
New Grade 2 lets you get away with being on Persona, or you can be on Grade 4. Either way, you're happy because you have the numbers and you also are able to bounce stuff back and you can get the attacks that you need to get without having to stress too hard. So that's why I actually run the Persona as well on top of the Grade 4, because I think you can kind of go either way and be okay. Um, and like I said, you still have the extra attack, so you don't have to like worry too much about like missing out on extra attack. Like Kyrie had originally grade four was like more impactful because it can get the attacks more consistently. But now under Persona, you can kind of still do that too. There's a couple ways you can build a deck. This, this deck's really generic outside of the Kyrie itself. You can kind of throw whatever you want to this deck and it will work. But here we are running the mouse just for extra soul and extra power. Running the discard, since we do have the grade four in the deck, you can actually run this card. This is the new card. If you have the great fours, you can guard with this card. You can also draw cards on Rearguard Circle. And if you were to ride to three, you can also draw a card, which is pretty nice. So you can also pitch her to just draw. And it's a free draw, especially if you're into three. So if you have too many of these copies, guess what? You can ditch one and you'll be able to draw a card, which is also really nice. After that, I do run Yuika. I just think the more you bounce, the better your life is. And this deck definitely bounces a lot. Why not bounce even more? I just think bouncing is like very impactful. She's not mandatory. You can run Eileen in her spot or a couple other cards. You can run friends cards if you want. Up to you how you want to go about it. This is what I'm doing. Next, we have probably the most expensive card in the deck. I'm not a fan of the fact that this is expensive. I still need to pick up my copies, but this is Yasmin. Yasmin basically says for a counter blast, you search your deck for the grade four, bring it to hand. And then on guard circle, this is a 15k shield, which is really nice. If you have a grade four Kyrie, she has the 15k shield on her. The 15k shield is actually really good. I actually really value this 15k shield a little bit more than I value the grade two version of this. Uh, there's a grade two version that you can reveal a Kyrie to get the power. I like this one more. Um, so, but, but the fact that she searches your deck and is also a bunch of shield in your hand is really nice. So when you finally get the card that you need, uh, she also sends herself back so you can find her again and, you know, user but yeah just a really nice card the canvas is a little heavy but she lets you find what you're looking for we have the four in here to the, basically the, the fifth copy of this for to basically for free finder cards because we can get the grade four get the persona we can get the the the, the mousy we can get the grade three get a lot of stuff off of the for four so it's really useful you can get like a persona copy and you get the grade four or you can get one of these just for extra whatever you want to do it's really really nice and then, then the last thing i run in here is this card right here uh this is free uh, and then also it recycles itself, which is also really cool. So you can choose my rear guards and at the end of the, the turn, you can return it to hand. So basically, um, you can pick a booster in the back row that you know you're not going to bounce or maybe something behind Kyrie, And you can just leave that there, boost with it, and it bounces back to hand. And by the way, it says any rear guard. So you can call whatever you want as long as it's not an order and you can bounce it back to hand. So in case you can't get like all your bounces off, this will get you the extra bounce. So you can theoretically bounce four cards a turn. You can bounce two off of Kyrie, one off of Yuika, and then one off of this. And I just think that concept's really cool. Because of this card, you can actually run that, that grade two that says when you play a normal order, you can look at top five of call card. Also not a bad alternative. If you in case you feel like you don't like, like this card or something like that, you can, you know, bump this down and put her in. It's just a really good alternative. Really, really fun stuff. I think this deck's great. I think it's only going to get better. We're getting more cards that are coming out, but in the future sets that are going to make this deck even more impactful. And I think there's a lot of ways you can play this. You can kind of go the grade three route. You can go the gem route. You can play like the Felista package. You can play basically whatever you want and it'll work. The Ryland's also really good because it recycles cards from your drop. While also bouncing cards on the board. So overall, just a really, really fun deck. Really, really cool. And I just think there's a lot of great stuff in here. Definitely, definitely a deck I'm going to be enjoying and playing. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is all the lyrical stuff that I'm going to be testing and playing with. A bunch of different decks, as you saw. All very different decks, with the exception of maybe Prism and Kyrie. I guess Pacifica is also like a bouncing deck in a way. Well, Pacifica is more toolboxy. But all different decks, different things to try out. They all do different things. I think every single deck in this set, including old and new, has a lot of really cool stuff you can do with them. I think all the lyrical decks are really cool to play. Really, really fun. Rather, they're old decks, new decks, uh, middle decks, like set three decks, set two decks. There's a lot of cool cards because everything got support. So if you already have an old deck somewhere in the dust, you can bring it out. Uh, get the one or two cards of support that your deck got and make it better. A good example is like the, the Kyoka decks, um, Herminia, Pratia. Uh, there's a bunch like uh, Pracholka, uh, a bunch of Hazelette, Hazel Medel, obviously. There's so many random decks that got out steel. So many random decks that got support off of this set. So this set provided so much for a bunch of decks. And whether it's good or bad, I'm not too sure. Whatever the case is, there's something for everyone in the set. And I think that's the beauty of the set. It's just such a great set. So yeah, peace out guys. Enjoy and stay awesome. Uh, 50cars.shop, code orange for all your goodies. I forgot to mention in my what to buy. 50cars.shop, code orange for all your goodies, anything you may need. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. 
for just to support me and keep the channel going it does every single sub every single like it does help keep the channel growing really appreciate y'all on that guys if you guys don't see me anytime soon i will be in japan i'll be i'll be casting with jj so stay tuned for that we got amazing casters got amazing stuff going on got amazing competitors going in for this got a lot of people coming from different different areas all over the world to compete so it's gonna be a really really fun time can't wait to see y'all there can't wait for you guys to see the games the stream games very very exciting stuff anyway peace out guys that's for daniel see you guys in future video bye